Oleg Sentsov, a Ukrainian filmmaker, was detained in Crimea in May of that year and sentenced to 20 years in a Russian prison on charges of terrorism. Sentsov's extradition to Ukraine was denied in 2016 on the grounds that he had become a Russian citizen upon the annexation. On May 14, 2018, he declared an indefinite hunger strike, stating that the only condition for its termination is the release of all Ukrainian political prisoners that are currently present on the territory of the Russian Federation. Today marks day 122 of his hunger strike. Tanya Cooper is the Ukraine researcher with the Europe and Central Asia Division at Human Rights Watch. She works on issues related to freedom of assembly, association and expression, LGBT rights and discrimination. Polina Kovaleva is the Eurasia Project Director at PEN America. For the last two years at PEN America, she has led the organization's work in advancing the celebration of literature and defense of free expression in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and Central Asia. In 2017, PEN America gave its annual Freedom to Write Award to Oleg Sentsov, and since then, Polina has led a global coalition of advocates in a tireless campaign for his release. Renowned filmmaker Sergei Loznitsa was born in Belarus and raised in Ukraine. Many of his films have played at the festival, including the fiction films My Joy and In the Fog, as well as the documentaries Maidan, The Event, and Austerlitz. His two most recent films, Donbass and The Trial, are playing at the festival this year. We will start the session with a clip of The Trial and then invite our esteemed speakers to the stage. Roll the clip.
Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Sergei, I want to start with you. We just saw a clip of the trial. Uh, the trial is an archive film about Stalinist show trials, but of course we're here to talk about a different trial, a modern day trial. Can you tell us the difference between the trials in your film and that of Oleg Sentsov, if any? Uh, good uh, afternoon. <laughs> Значит, ну, сначала я должен, наверное, объяснить, э, э, о чем эта картина. Э, это фильм, о, э, значит, снят в целях пропаганды. Э, в 30-м году э, это э, дело восьми, э, значит, придуманные, абсолютно придуманные ОГПУ, спецслужбами, э, значит, промышленной партии, которая никогда не существовала, и значит, судили восемь высокого уровня, это уровни, уровень министров, значит, судили чиновников. И этим, значит, они оклеветали себя, они говорили о том, что они занимались вредительством, и значит, они согласились с, признать свою вину и согласились принимать участие в этом спектакле. Yes. Okay. okay, so first I have to explain what the movie is about. Uh, the footage was shot in 1930 for the purposes of propaganda. Uh, the trial was completely staged. Uh, everything was fake. It was uh, staged by the Russian government, by the police department. Uh, eight highly uh, placed officials, the level of ministers, were accused of sabotage and uh, wreckage, and uh, they... Um, were accused of creating the industrial party, an organization that never existed, and they were forced to implicate themselves, and they agreed to participate in this show. Значит, дело в том, что сейчас это, в советское время эта юридическая система, она была полностью разрушена, и она с тех пор не восстановлена. И сейчас они пытаются, или восстановлена недостаточно, не в той степени, в какой необходимо, и сейчас они пытаются создавать точно такие же случаи. И случай Олега, например, это точно такой же значит, суд, когда обвиняют совершенно невинных людей в преступлениях или в замысле преступления, которого вообще не существовало. System that existed during the Soviet period was uh, completely destroyed, and uh, they're trying to replicate those short uh, show trials, uh, trying to do the same thing. So, one example is the trial of uh, Alexensov. I forgot about my mic. The trial of Alexensov. Uh, they're trying to uh, put on trial innocent people and forcing them to implicate themselves in committing crimes or in planning to commit crimes. Разница с 30-ми годами заключается в следующем. Значит, пока что никто не согласен играть роль актера и согласиться с обвинениями. Значит, и пока что люди не готовы верить в суд. Потому что никто не верит в то, что суд дал за что-то 20 лет. Это в большинстве с вами, если вы любого спросите, скажут, что нет. И люди не готовы радоваться, как тогда, значит, жестоким приговорам, значит, расстрельным приговорам, например, которые были вынесены тогда. Конечно, такой поддержки у суда нет. So what's the difference? The difference between uh, what's happening now and what was happening in 1930s, um, today people uh, do not agree to be actors in such show trials and participate in them. Uh, people have no belief, no trust in the judicial system today. So nobody believes that uh, those uh, verdicts are fair, those uh, you know, 20 years, the majority of people don't believe that people like Oleksandrov deserve 20 years in prison. And uh, people are not happy when they hear those uh, cruel verdicts that people are placed uh, in front of a firing squad, like we see in the movie. И случай с Олегом Сенцовым это не единственный случай. Таких случаев уже было много. Они пытаются это шоу создать, эту систему репрессивную воссоздать, но пока что не получается. 
So the case of Alexinsov is not the only case. They're trying to reconstruct this uh, repressive system, but so far uh, with not so much success. Uh, another question for you. Why, why do you think Putin is obsessed with Crimea? Why Crimea? Uh, uh, if we switch to political topic, uh, uh, I think he's uh, obsessed not about uh, uh, Crimea. He is uh, uh, the Russian the top, yes, mm. or president. He is obsessed about uh, Ukraine itself because without Ukraine, Russian, the, Russia does not exist, you know, mm. in his uh, um, vision. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm very surprised that uh, the uh, politics and uh, uh, leaders of the biggest country in the world didn't listen what he's saying. Uh, he said already in Munich uh, in 2004, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, that uh, uh, Ukraine is not a state. Mm. It was uh, on the stage, uh, you know, present to the politics, you know, and uh, he followed this uh, line. And uh, Crimea was uh, easy to take, uh, to just to took, and he did it. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, okay, part of uh, this uh, region uh, on the east, it's it's part, small part of the region, uh, Donbas and Lugansk. Uh, he also can because it's uh, like uh, step, 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 Stepen. You know, it's not a forest. Mm -hmm. uh, it means it's uh, exclude partisan movement. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, also, uh, Crimea is a territory which uh, Stalin cleaned from the, uh, the people who lived there. Crimea for Tatarian people. It was, uh, you know, it's most population is Tatarian. Uh, uh, Greek, uh, uh, Italian, it was Italian uh, mm -hmm. who lived there, uh, from Genoa. <clears throat> uh, and uh, they saved the language from 15th century uh, in Crimea, but Stalin sent them uh, to Siberia. And uh, uh, after that, he gave this land to the people from this uh, Smirsh, uh, special forces, uh, uh, which uh, uh, stay in, not on front line during the Second World War, stay behind them and mm -hmm. shoot when uh, soldiers uh, running uh, from the front line, you know? And they all, mostly all of these uh, people and the relatives, uh, they have uh, land there. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, they, uh, it's not uh, people who are growing from that. And after that, after 1991, uh, Tatarian came back. It was uh, also a uh, conflict uh, uh, because they was an owner of the land and mm -hmm. uh, uh, nobody solved this problem. And somehow Ukraine power make it, uh, uh, you know, so they uh, didn't give the war uh, started uh, mm -hmm. because of the property. And uh, now they did it because uh, some population, of course, is, uh, they, I can say that the, some of them are pro-Russian mm -hmm. and with the soldiers. Uh, in, in general, uh, nobody uh, without uh, this army, nobody start war in the east of Ukraine. You know, without strong uh, support from the Russian army. Of course. Nobody, without weapon, nobody will start in this, mm -hmm. even in Donbas, in Crimea, nobody will do it. Of course. <clears throat> uh, Tanya, Human Rights Watch, as I understand, was the only international group that went to Crimea last year. Can you tell us what you and your group observed? Um, absolutely. Uh, so we were actually there uh, in Crimea at the onset of the occupation in March 2014, and we um, documented and we could actually see the um, this kind of encroaching um, occupation and um, the uh, the repressive policies against critics of Russia's um, actions in Crimea right when um, they were they were happening. Um, we documented we documented horrible torture, enforced disappearances of people. Um, and just, um, you know, total obliteration of independent media in Crimea. So right now we can say there's no independent media in Crimea. Uh, no uh, space for open discussion, uh, and and this is this is why it's so important uh, to talk about this case because that's what Oleg was um, was um, also criticizing when he was arrested and then charged with absurd. Um, um, uh, crimes. Uh, he, um, like many others, didn't want to stand for what Russia was was planning to do in Crimea. Um, so I was there twice last year, and um, what we were seeing is 
you know, the, the climate of repression and fear is very palpable. So we talked to Ukrainian um, activists who are still there trying to not even, you know, stage anything uh, like political events or um, talk about uh, occupation openly, but even to um, have um, sessions to discuss Ukrainian culture, to talk in Ukrainian in Crimea. They're persecuted, they're harassed, and they're threatened with uh, criminal charges if they continue to do that. We went to homes and cafes of Crimean Tatars who are extremely courageous and persistent in their um, opposition to what's happening uh, to their homeland. You know, for them, it's like the, you know, the, the, this deja vu, there's a very painful deja vu. They've been already deported from their homeland. And Russia comes back and does, you know, exactly the same what the Soviet Union regime has done to, you know, to them, to their families, and how devastating it has been for their, you know, for the culture, their language, their legacy. Um, and, um, you know, Many of Crimean Tatars are harassed, persecuted, and detained for um, you know, similar charges, terrorism, separatism. So what Russian authorities are trying to do with Oleg and others is to really show the price mm -hmm. you will pay for saying that you don't agree that um, you know, when you speak out against abuses and when you actually, you know, refuse to remain silent because you see the, um, the injustice happening. Um, you know, we will continue, of course, monitoring this, but um, the situation is getting worse. And, um, you know, the, discussing this case, discussing, continuing to discuss situation um, about, um, about Crimea, about what's happening there is uh, extremely important. Mm -hmm. Paulina, I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about PEN America and why, why from your organization's point of view, the case of Oleg Sentsov matters. Uh, <clears throat> well, I would say in general um, why this case matters to, to us and to the world, I would say. Um, I think 2014 was a very important year for Russia and for Ukraine. Um, and, you know, for many, for some Russians, uh, that was a very critical point um, after which they just cannot stand and stay, stay in Russia anymore. Like we heard from uh, Vitaly Mansky yesterday, that was exactly the year when he and his wife, they left Russia because they just couldn't, couldn't leave there anymore. Um, there, is, there is this people who just you know, decide to leave. There is people who stay, but they are scared and they don't really say anything. And there is a big amount of people who actually think that this, is, this was a victory of Russia. They, propaganda works well, you know, like they, they really think that they are proud mm -hmm. that Russia has Crimea right now. Um, so there is, there, is no, there is no protest as it is. And there is Oleg Sentsov, who is the only one, who is, who is basically like one person against this huge country, enormous power, uh, this is huge machine that works um, on this issue. And this is one reason. Another reason is, is actually interesting because, uh, you know, I, li like, I want you to understand me, uh, to get me right. Uh, I don't deny Alex Ukrainian citizenship. He is Ukrainian from top to toes, toes. And this is for sure, he was born there. But his family, um, is from Russia. He, they, they came to Crimea. How he got there? They came to Crimea because um, his older sister uh, uh, had the bad health, and they, they, her parents, their parents wanted um, to go south to have a better uh, ecology, mm -hmm. better um, environment for her to to raise a kid, and that's. Uh, why, and th this is like very common, I'm uh, coming from Urals as well, as, as Alex and Sof's um, uh, parents, and I know that the culture is terrible there, so that's why parents, they do that. But why I'm saying this, because it's, 
he's not, Alexensov is not a symbol, it's not, he's not only a symbol of Ukrainians resisting Russian occupation of Crimea, but he's also a symbol of Russians resisting yeah. Putin's politics uh, that is meant to be for Russians, you know? So this is a, um, a very interesting um, thing. And the last reason is, remember, he was tortured in the beginning, like seriously tortured. And um, I hope that uh, most of you uh, from the audience, they, you guys don't read the notes for, about torture uh, for work, as we sometimes do with Tanya, we'll understand what I'm talking about. It's, it's horrifying what he was going through. And unlike two other people who were caught with him, he didn't confess after torture. He was since the beginning until today, always saying that he didn't commit any crime. And he is Ukrainian, not Russian. So this is an, an enormous um, example of bravery, mm -hmm. which for me makes, makes it actually the history of Russia is divides it before Alexensov and after. Hmm. Well, believe it or not, the, the, the case of Oleksensov, the, the news of what's happening with Oleksensov doesn't travel very far, does not travel to North America. I've, in fact, most of the people I speak to don't know who he is. Can you, can you tell us what is the situation now? When's the last real update you've heard from, from him, from his family? What's real for any this of you? This is a question to all of us. Um, well, I just um, say I um, uh, messaged with uh, his cousin Natalia Kaplan a few days ago. Um, she's probably like the biggest advocate for him uh, from from his family. Uh, she said, so Dinzi, his uh, his lawyer, visited him in Labitnangi recently, and um, she said that he, through Dinzi he. Uh, sent her a, a, um, a tes testament, mm -hmm. like what he statement, uh, a will. A will. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Yeah, a will um, explaining what should happen mm -hmm. uh, after his death. So I think um, he doesn't believe in release anymore, and this is um, this is probably the worst. Because you, like when you lose hope, you 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 die very quickly after that. So um, I think that's also that's the news that should mobilize us again and again. Mm -hmm. um, that's unfortunately the last news I heard. I want to hear because you come from such the three of you come from different perspectives. I want to hear from all of your points of view. What actually? What can people do? What can people in this room do? What can people beyond this room do to support the case of Oleg Sentsov? Starting with you, Tanya. Sure. Um, I actually just wanted to pick up on a few points that uh, Paulina made and just say, you know, why is this case so uh, extraordinary, right? Um, why? Why? Um, is Alex's case actually something we are talking about here? And it's because, as um, you know, Sergei and Palina kind of highlighted, it's the man who refuses to stay silent, who refuses to play part in the show that the Russian government is forcing him to. Um, he's a scapegoat, he's someone who is supposed to show other Russians and others who get, um, you know, uh, who get unlucky to be in this position, uh, what the price uh, for speaking out, for having their, you know, having an opinion, and for actually, um, you know, saying this is not right. Uh, he is um, on a hunger strike, as you heard, and it's been four months. So um, I think none of us probably know what it feels like or what a person going through that, uh, you know, feels like. Um, he, we are, there's a very real possibility he's going to die, and we're going to lose a man who um, prices the freedom of others above his life. Um, he, you know, the hunger strike that he started is to, uh, to demand to free 64 other Ukrainian um, prisoners who are held uh, in Russia for political, on politically motivated charges. He is not on that list himself. Um, which um, 
you know, and, and his fate and his experience, uh, what um, he's going through right now, really, um, I think, um, emphasizes the regime we're dealing with in Russia these days. Because um, it's, you know, Kremlin is um, obviously, um, in this case, ext is extremely ruthless and merciless and um, is willing to destroy people's lives to keep them silent and to tell them then that they need to play by the rules. Um, which is why it's so important that we don't, um, we don't keep silent about this case and others. Which is why it's so important that we continue discussing uh, situations like this and the situation for uh, political prisoners in Russia and just in general because there are many, many more unfortunately. Uh, and it is important uh, to keep uh, talking to our respective governments to do more, to be creative, to be persistent, to not take the lies and the excuses of the Russian government um, at face value and to push for, uh, you know, for, for more solutions and be flexible uh, because it is worth um, uh, to save a person's life, um, especially in this case. So for example, um, there is no reason why Alexinsov and others cannot be on prisoner exchange lists that Russia and Ukraine are uh, constantly discussing. And um, other governments, Canadian government uh, in this case, should be um, facilitating uh, this, this process and making sure that there is a um, constructive discussion about this. This is one of the examples that um, you know, we can think of. Mm -hmm. Same question. Uh, I think we have to uh, deal with a uh, uh, bigger problem because uh, Oleg is just a part of that problem. And uh, he, uh, you know, make it visible. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, he's not alone who was innocent. And it's not the first uh, uh, trial which was uh, in this way. Uh, when uh, you don't have any evidence and after that uh, receive like 20, 11, 15 and so whatever and uh, life penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I remember the case with the Yukas when uh, there's no proof, nothing, it's, uh, you know, but uh, uh, it means that it's idea to destroy justice mm -hmm. in general this, uh, and uh, not only inside country. You know, this uh, disease have a um, tendons to distribute everywhere. And this is uh, kind of bacteria. And uh, uh, it is kind of a monopoly because they would like to grow and uh, took uh, more territory, uh, maximum territory as it possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, uh, they destroy the international uh, justice now. Uh, come on, the, now in, in Europe, uh, four years we have a war. Nobody speak about this war, yes? And uh, they took part of territory, uh, and first time after Second World War, and they opened uh, Pandora box, because everybody now can say, okay, uh, this is, doesn't work. We can't do anything, and nobody can do anything uh, against that. Mm. And uh, uh, the uh, trials in Stalin time, uh, like in 20s and 30s, uh, finished with a great terror. Yes, great is a wrong word for that, but big terror. And uh, after that, it uh, ended up with the Second World War. You know, agreement with Hitler, and uh, because uh, it is a logic of development of that system. And uh, if you uh, agree that this system exists uh, and you just ignore what happens there, uh, you will have it on your table. Uh, and now, for example, the, all these or organizations like United Nations, they look ridiculous. They just uh, discuss about cannibalism. They all say that uh, this cannibalism is impossible, but mm -hmm. thank you very much for discussion. You know, and we can do anything. It's a, it's a question to uh, the recent politics. It's our question, mm -hmm. uh, because we address our, you know, we express our opinion, address it uh, to the politics, and they ignore that. Uh, what it means that uh, uh, thousand filmmakers, European Film Academy at least, uh, uh, they protest against that. Against that. Uh, it started four years ago, nobody wants to listen, and that's all. Sir, Sergei is referring to the European Film Academy, which actually has a very large campaign to free Oleg Sentsov. Many, many famous filmmakers have joined it. 
Yeah, but uh, this is the people who uh, their profession uh, uh, reflect on uh, their life, on society, and uh, you know, on the rules and how we live and just observe. Mm -hmm. This is a profession. And also writers, and also actors, and also uh, scientists, the mm -hmm. Nobel laureate. They, 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 it's not, uh, uh, you know, last people, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, they, they, they say something. It's, uh, uh, it's important that uh, we have, uh, like, break between the people who uh, s uh, decide something in our life, yes? Uh, on the top of this world politic, and people who um, described how we live and what is the problem we have, because our, you know, I, I always and uh, m most uh, film directors have a problem with the disease, a tragedy, drama. It's a description of the something wrong, you know, the criminal, it, uh, the drama. It's uh, something wrong, and we try to solve that, find the way how, how, uh, what to do with it. Hmm. And uh, uh, the politics don't want to listen to these people. Uh, okay, uh, we are in a very problematic situation when the car is driving, the speed is very fast, and you press uh, this, uh, the politics press this uh, pedal, <laughs> you know, gas, mm -hmm. and the, the ice is closed. This is, uh, 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 it, it will be a common problem. And here also, you know. <clears throat> um, just to add to this point, um, since we have uh, this panel at TIFF, uh, I just want to also address the uh, filmmakers community mm -hmm. and people who are involved with filmmaking process. Um, and also to kind of like make a positive maybe ending to what you said, like you said that um, powers, they don't listen to you, artistic people, to, to people who um, support Alex and so from, from the artistic community. But I think uh, it is still incredibly important to continue doing that. And, um, and also I want to say that I, um, because I work with artists and writers, I um, asked a lot of artists and writers to uh, support Alex and so forth. And I don't divide um, artists, do they support Putin or do they, don't they support Putin? I, I just ask everybody. Sometimes I send like hundreds of emails a day. Um, and there are some artists who do support Putin and who um, could make a difference because of that, because they are somehow uh, can uh, make certain asks and, uh, you know, um, reach out to those powerful people, but they don't. Um, and, and that's totally fine. That's absolutely okay. Everybody can, uh, has, it's, can make a choice. Uh, but I want to say that it is, um, it is, uh, it's probably a very simple thing, what I'm going to say. Um, that you all know, but still it is very important to remember and it's very important to point out right now that um, filmmakers and people who are involved in filmmaking process, they, have, uh, they send their message to a very large audience. And that's why that, that gives a certain responsibility to, to, um, to you guys. And it's very important to just think about what kind of mark you want to leave in history with your work. Whether or not it's, it can be um, just keeping silence on the case of such cases as Alex and so on, or, um, or uh, supporting Alex and so on. And that's just a very, very important thing, thing to think about. Hmm? Uh. Uh, uh, you know, uh, now it's a question to act, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember the uh, moment when uh, the West Berlin uh, was occupied or surrounded by Soviet troops and they start to make a war, wall. And it was a moment uh, when uh, they was cut 
out from the water, from the food, and from everything. Yes, it was a moment when the Americans plane uh, take responsibility and fly without permission to West Berlin and make a bridge. The first plane, first plane. Uh, it is uh, kamikaze. It was a kamikaze. They don't know Russians will shoot them or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and this bridge saved uh, West, Ber uh, West Berlin. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, now time to act because, uh, you know, uh, uh, what uh, they have to do is just pack plane with a mission and send this plane uh, to close airport, for example. No, uh, because just talk is nothing. It's not help. And I think the people who have power, uh, they didn't take this uh, case seriously. Hmm. You know, uh, because uh, you can just compare economic of different country and can see who depend from whom. They didn't take this case seriously. It's a question to them also. I think it also shows us something about Oleg because it's the reason why we do panels like this. It's the reason why the European Film Academy has rallied against him. So few people really do act. This is a special person who did take extraordinary actions, who is putting their own life on the line, who is standing up to oppression, to fascism. And it's why we wanted to do this session to support him. It's why he's in our hearts. I know when we were organizing to talk about this, it, it, you know, it's, it's nice to see each other and it's nice to, to be able to talk about what we want the world to be like, but also we have extremely heavy hearts knowing that someone we really care about is in this terrible position. Um, and to be honest, I really didn't want to leave the 10th annual doc conference on a heavy note, but I also think it's important for us to recognize that times have changed and that it is time for action. It's exactly why I wanted you here, Sergei. It's exactly why you both traveled such a long way to be with us. And I, I really want to say that I appreciate you. Um, we, we do have a special group that has joined us at the DOC conference. It's called um, Postcards for Prisoners. They're a Toronto-based activist group that send postcards to political prisoners detained by the Kremlin. They're going to be outside after the session. They will be signing cards and sending them to Oleg with the simple message that he knows that there are people in Toronto that are thinking of him. The cards say, Oleg, we're writing to you from the Toronto International Film Festival. We hope to see you here next year. We hope you can all sign one. Um, I also I have to wrap the session, unfortunately, so a, a few closing remarks. I, I want to say thank you to our panelists. It really, like, it means so much to me to have you here, and as much as my heart hurts for what's happening right now, I really feel like there, there is a group of us who care. We have been doing a photo campaign around the festival of directors holding free sense-off signs. You can look up the hashtag, you can learn more, find out more information on the issue on him and on other political prisoners. Um, and to wrap the conference, uh, uh, I'd like to say that the, the conference is made possible through the generous sponsorship of Showtime Networks. I want to thank my colleague and co-host Tom Powers for his moderation throughout the day. And I would also like to thank CBC and the Glenn Gould Studio. Thank you to the TIFF staff who make the DOC conference happen. They are Kathleen Drum, Karina Rottenstein, Neil McPherson, Melissa D'Agostino, Kristen Boyben, Rebecca Moran, Diane Capoletto, Aaron Van Domlin, Yula Shengavi, Anita Kotick, Jonah Kamphorst, Bronwyn Eady, Asia Sunik, Amir Abdullahi, Aaron Fitzgerald, Aaron O'Hanley, Alex Woodside, and everyone at CBC. I also want to thank the audience for your support over the years. We really appreciate you. We really hope to see you back here in 2019. Um, enjoy the cocktail afterwards brought to you by Showtime. And please keep Oleg in your heart. We have pins outside, uh, and we'd like to keep talking about him throughout the festival until he's free. Thank you.